Thank you for joining me. In this video, we will use a Redline Data Station Plus and Crimson 3.0 software to create and map data tags to an external device and then log those tags to a compact flashcard. A compact flashcard installed into a Redline G3 HMI, Modular Controller Master, or in this case a Data Station Plus, has a multitude of uses including security logging, recipe storage, alarm and batch logging, and storing reports but we will target the data logging function in this example. First off, I want to make reference to the communication setup that we used in Crimson 3 for the protocol conversion video in which we showed an Allen Bradley PLC communicating to the RS-232 port of a Red Lion Data Station Plus. I'll build the data tags and the data logging sections in this video using the same setup. After you have your communications devices configured, you can then jump to the data tags section where we will manually create a few tags, map them to, in this case, the Allen Bradley PLC, and then we'll look at a simple solution for logging them to Compact Flash. So the first thing we'll do is go to the data tags section by using the navigation buttons, and I will manually create three tags by hitting the new button three times. And while I'm here, I'll create a folder to put them in. Then I just simply drag the tags down into the folder, like this. Now I want to rename my folder. So I highlight the folder and hit F2. And I'm going to call that AB Tags. Then I want to rename my tags as well. So let's call tag 1 Gallons. I'll call tag 2 set point 1 and I'm going to call tag 3 set point 2. Now those tags aren't mapped to anything just yet so we'll highlight the first tag gallons come over to the source button drop that down and at the bottom of the list is my Allen Bradley device I'm going to select integers. We'll map that to N70 and say OK. Now gallons is mapped to the Allen Bradley at N70. I'm going to use the next button and that will map that one to N71 and then we'll take set point 2 and use the next button and map that one to N72. Let's take a quick look at the mass editing of tags. If I wanted to change the formatting on my gallons tag, I highlight that tag and then slide over to the format tab across the top. And what I want to do is change the format type from general to numeric. This enables a data format box that lets me configure the numeric field of that tag. So let's make the number of digits before the decimal point 3 and the number of digits after the decimal point, 2. Now, what if I want to change the formatting on the rest of my tags to match those changes? Not a big deal on two tags to do them one at a time, but what if I had 30 to change? Holding down my shift key, I multiple select the other tags, right click on them, and select copy format. Now it's waiting for me to point at a source for the formatting. So I point at gallons and click and I'm told that the selected properties were applied successfully. And now if I look at each tag you can see the formatting type and the data formatting has changed accordingly. A big time saver if you need to make changes to a long list of tags. So let's move on to the data logger. First you'll notice there are no logs in the tree, so we go up to the New Log button and create a log. Let's go ahead and rename the log by pressing the F2 key, and I'll call this log AB. Looking at the options for this log, you'll see two update types, Continuous Sample, which allows the user to program the rate at which the samples update, or Triggered Snapshot, whereby you specify an event or condition that causes the log to update on each occurrence of the event or condition. We will use Continuous Sample. The update rate is simply how often you want to record a sample. Let's make that 2. 
How many samples in each file? Make that 1,800. And how many files do we want to create? Make that 24. So what we just did in this example is set the data logger up to log 24 hours of data with each file representing one hour of samples. Now since the data logger operates on a first in first out basis, when the data logger puts the specified number of samples in the last file, it automatically starts overwriting the samples in the first file, so this example always shows the last 24 hours worth of data. Now I can simply drag my folder down to the log contents window and drop it into pl place, download my program to the data station plus, and we are logging data to an installed compact flashcard. Then, in the end, there are several ways to access and manipulate the data on the compact flashcard. In this example, I show using Internet Explorer to log into the web server on the Data Station Plus and click on the View Logs link. There's the AB log that we created a minute ago. Click on that and you can see that I've been logging data in excess of 24 hours as here are all 24 CSV files. Then I can just click on the file that I want to view and take a look. The data is logged in open CSV format, so there's no third-party software to buy or maintain. The files open directly into Excel, and Redline's data logger has automatically taken care of the details by giving a time and date stamp to each sample and by placing the names of the selected data tags at the top of each column. Keep in mind that in this video I used a Data Station Plus as my hardware of choice to do data logging, but you can achieve the same outcome with Redline's G3 line of HMIs and most models of the Modular Controller Master. And that, my friends, is the data logging overview using a Redline Data Station Plus and Crimson 3.0.